Hi guys, hope you're all well out there today. Welcome back to the channel or welcome if it's your first time here. My name is Dan. Uh, today's video is gonna be all about what I'm calling my grab and go rig for gigs. As always, if you dig this content or any of the other stuff I'm putting out, please look at liking and subscribing. There's loads more coming and it really helps me out when I'm creating future videos. So without further ado, let's get into it. So as a lot of you might know, if you frequent this channel, I'm a big fan of the Kemper. And in those videos, I also state that I'm still a big fan of valve amps and use them quite a bit. Um, so this grab and go rig I use for a lot of pub gigs, uh, depth gigs, so gigs where I'm turning up with a band that I'm not familiar with, uh, jams, anything like that. And the reason I don't use the Kemper for those gigs is one, for smaller pub gigs and stuff, I don't want a rig as expensive as the Kemper kicking about with a load of drunk people. Um, two, it's dependent on sound check. Like the Kemper is wicked if you can have a proper sound check. And I tend to use in ears and things with a lot of gigs there, like smaller pub gigs or even depth gigs, you don't know what the situation is. You might be rocking up and just playing straight off. So for those kind of situations, I prefer just to have a valve amp. I've got a small pedal board down here, which I'll show you shortly. And I travel with my mono gig bag with two guitars in or a couple of hard cases. And if I take the mono bag, I can take this rig in one trip from the house to the car, from the car to the venue, and then in reverse again. So it's great for that kind of thing. God, quick drink break. I seem to pick the hottest days to film on. <laughs> so I'll quickly take you through the guitars and the amp because there's not a great deal to say there. Um, my two main guitars, depending on the gig, is either this FGN Odyssey, which I've done a video on, or I have a Gibson Les Paul Studio uh, with Tone Rider pickups in it. So the, this has Seymour Duncan's. The Les Paul currently has a Tone Rider Birmingham and a Rebel 90 at the neck. Uh, Tone Rider are a great pickup company. I've got a good relationship with them. Um, and I recommend you check them out if you get a chance for the money. They're fantastic pickups. So I flick between those two depending on the gig and the spares change if I am taking this and I need a Strat style guitar, I've got a Reverend Eastsider S, which I take as a spare. And if I'm taking my Les Paul, I've got a number of Les Paul style guitars or a Washburn Semi Hollow, which is very cool, which I use for more. I do the occasional sort of trio, not lounge or jazz, because I can't jazz for shit. But um, that kind of more laid back stuff, I take the Semi Hollow. Uh, amp wise, I've got uh, a Laney VC uh, LC32, which has had a couple of tweaks. It's got a warehouse ET65 speaker, I think. Uh, and it's had a couple of minor tweaks to the preamp circuitry, but nothing major. Um, this amp cost me, I think 120 quid. Uh, and it, with a bit of upgrading, it sounds great. And like I said, for those gigs, like pub gigs and stuff, I don't worry about this amp. I'm pretty happy knocking it about. Obviously, I do my best not to let anyone put a pint on it, but it does the job. I've got a little Laney uh, VC15 combo that I occasionally use uh, in dual mono or stereo, but the stereo is only for delays. Um, yeah, so I use that as a clean platform and everything is happening down on the pedal boards. So this is the pedal board. Uh, it's certainly not gonna win any awards on Instagram for the sexiest pedal board, but it's functional and practical and I'm all about that. <laughs> um, so the actual board is a rock board by Warwick, essentially the same construction and dimensions as a Pedal Train Junior. Power supply underneath is a Voodoo Labs Pedal Power 2 Plus, and that's actually powering everything on the board. There's a couple of things that are daisy chained together, but I've done some tests and made sure nothing's interfering. Um, I've also got an 18 volt charge pump under the board because I use the Friedman 18 volts. So the signal comes in via my wire pedal or whatever I've got on the floor next to it for a bit of fun and then hits the Musicom Labs EFX Lite 6M, which is an audio loop switcher, similar to the Boss ES series or the Gig Rig G2, but obviously a lot more compact and less feature laden. So it's got six loops. I'm only using four and a uh, function switch. I just use it really to flip flop between main sounds. And then I uh, use the actual foot switches on the pedals to sort of queue up sounds per song or per gig. Um, 
then loop number one in that switcher is my Zoom MS50G, absolute monster pedal and extremely underrated. I use that for all of my modulation, fuzz, octave fuzz, pitch shifters, even a little bit of time-based stuff. And I think this pedal is pretty much responsible for keeping this board as small as it is and still letting me have the sounds that I want. So um, it's also got a mode where you can scroll through presets using the main foot switch and then I can engage them with the loop switcher. So yeah, that's tremendous. Loop number two is my clean loop. And so that's my basic clean sound. It, it hits this uh, Mua yellow comp, which is a clone of the diamond compressor. Um, I like my compressors with a little bit of character. So this is great. It's got a nice sort of musical squish to it, um, but it's uh, I'm using it to really goose the front of the amp as well. Uh, and what's nice is it's got a, a really good tone control on it, which to the left, if you're looking at it, will add bass and subtract treble and vice versa the other way. So if I'm doing gigs where I'm turning up and it's rented backline, the rented backline's normally either a Fender Twin or like a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. That's really handy for just shaving off some harsh treble if you need it or brightening it up if I'm using humbuckers. Um, then it hits this TC Spark, which I'm just using for a real slight boost in the clean um, and it just helps little parts pop out. So loop number three is my gain pedals. Um, so when I switch to a gain sound, it disengages the clean loop, which is the compressor. And so the, the drive pedals are just hitting the amp straight out. I don't really like a compressor hitting a drive pedal. It just doesn't, doesn't sit well with me. Um, so I tend to just have two drive pedals on the board of whatever I'm feeling at the time or whatever the gig requires. The main one at the moment seems to be this Friedman Dirty Shirley running 18 volts. It's just got a great EQ section. It seems to sound good with whatever amp I put it through. Um, Slot number two tends to be my Bogner Blue, which is an outrageous pedal and great for the lower gain stuff. Um, but at the moment, I've recently got this Barber Burn unit, which is a cracking drive pedal, two-sided. Um, and yeah, so that's my drives at the moment and will be for this demo, but that changes quite frequently. Um, loop number four is my Moa EQ, which is up here. And that is just used as a boost so I can sculpt the boost sound. I tend to shave off a little bit of top end, boost the mids, and a little bit of a volume boost. I don't go crazy, just enough to push you over the mix. After that, it leaves the loop switcher and comes out into the TC flashback. I've modified this flashback so that it accepts relay changes from this switcher so I can change whether it's engaged or bypassed using a relay and what that does because it's out of a loop one it means i can engage it any time but two it means that when i engage it using a preset when i disengage it and go back to another sound i still get delay trails from it so that's really handy um, i've also put a rubber grommet on here to change the effects level with my foot and then last of all is the tc hall of fame and this for me is mainly an always on pedal unless the amp has a good reverb uh, which the Laney doesn't it's not that it's not a good reverb it's that I've never heard it working properly <laughs> uh, when I got it it was knacked so this is what I use um, and yeah so then it just goes out into the amp so let's check out some sounds so we're set up to listen to some sounds now again I'm sorry it's so hot in here I'm probably sweating and my hair looks ridiculous um, Got a camera set up for the pedal board. Hopefully it'll pick up enough for you to see what's going on. This is my basic clean sound. So it's guitar hitting the yellow comp, hitting the hall of fame and then into the amp. And it sounds like this. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, uh, I set the compressor up to hit the amp pretty hard. So without it, it'll be quite quiet, but this is without it. With it. So it's just got a little bit of squish, but I like hitting the front of the amp hard. It means I don't have to turn it up as loud. It hits the amp in a nice way and it makes the drive sound a bit better as well because they're louder. 
So that's that, and in the clean loop, the only other thing I've got is the spark, which is set just for probably a two, two or three dB boost, uh, and it just helps bring certain parts out of the mix. <clears throat> And what's cool, it's got that unlatched thing, so it only stays on as long as you keep your foot on it, or you can press it. And as you can hear with the compressor and then the spark, the amp's just starting to break up. Um, so off the board, I've got my full tone wah, which sounds like this. <laughs> And I'm using the deepest setting on there. I think it's called Whacked. Whackity Whack Whack. Um, and I prefer a deeper deeper setting. It just uh, speaks to me a bit more than the, the, the choppy funk stuff. So in loop number one, I have the Zoom MS50G like I spoke about, and it's all of my modulation and stuff. So I have that on foot switch number one, which brings that in. It keeps the compressor on, the Hall of Fame's on all of the time. Let's just quickly, so the Hall of Fame, my trails sound like this. It's a tone print that I've made that's somewhere between like a spring and a plate, I suppose. And then I just dial that in depending on the room. Sounds like this without. And then with. It might, uh, I'm not sure how it's going to sound on the recording, it might either sound a bit subtle or a little bit um, overwhelming, but obviously when you get into a mix in a different room, it's a, you know, I've so I've got the control for the amount of mix on there. So, back to the Zoom MS50G. So, this patch has the MS50G, the Yellow Comp and the Hall of Fame, and this is all my modulation, so I'll take you through my presets now. So this is a nice rotary sound. <laughs> Um, next up, we've got my 80s chorus sound. Can't live without that. So that's a, an effects chain. That's what's awesome about this. You can stack effects in it. I mean, it's tiny. Um, so that is a two choruses, I think, and a bit of reverb and delay as well. Um, next patch is my envelope filter. I am such a fan of envelope filters, it's untrue. And this is one of my favorites that I've actually found. Great for leads or for funky rhythm stuff. Uh, and again, that's a chain, so that's a filter, I think, and then an EQ to sculpt it. Um, got a phaser, just a small stone kind of clone. Which is cool. Uh, got a trem sound with a bit of reverb. Then we get a bit crazy. I've got an Octavia, which I mainly use in conjunction with the drives, but it sounds pretty wacky clean as well. And if you back the tone all the way off and back the volume off, you can get kind of a sitari kind of sound. Then I've got an Octron patch, which is an octave down and an octave up. The octave 
octave up is probably one of the, uh, the octave down, sorry, is probably a weak point of this MS50G, but still passable. Uh, then I've got like a Klon type of patch, which is like a mid boost good for solos. Still got the tone down. And this is what it's like compared with uh, dry. So this is just compressor and then I'll add the fake Klon on top. You'd be surprised how much that will push you out of the mix for leads on a gig. Uh, then uh, this is a sort of mental synth patch that I've come up with. <laughs> it sounds like this. Fancy getting a bit weird. <laughs> so that's it for the MS50G. Patch number two on the switcher is the MS50G plus the graphic EQ for a boost. So uh, for things like the filter, it will just pop you out of the mix of it. And I have the EQ just set for a bit of a mid boost and just to get rid of a little bit of the top end and a bit of a level boost. So number three, not patch number three on uh, the EFX light is my drive loop. So at the moment, the main sound is the Friedman Dirty Shirley and it sounds like this. <laughs> Great sort of like Marshall style drive. Um, and it's got a really flexible EQ. That tends to be where I have it gain level wise because it's chunky enough for riffing, but it's got plenty of uh, feel for solos. The second gain pedal on the board is the Barber Burn Unit, which is a two sided drive. Uh, it's supposed to be somewhere between like a Marshall and a Dumble in a box, but who knows? It just sounds good. So this is the higher gain side set up for, you know, like a proper drive sound. So more sort of touch sensitive than the Friedman is. The Friedman is as well, but that's more of a bluesier style overdrive and I'm actually using the second side to boost the Friedman without sounds like this and then with so I've got it set up a bit like the tube screamer trick with uh, not no gain and a load of level uh, and it just gives it like a mid push which is nice and then the last uh, loop is what I call the solo loop. So it brings in, it's my drive pedals, brings in the EQ and switches on the flashback as well, which like I said, is controlled by the relay. So this is the lead sound. Um, so that flashback sound is just my tone print, sort of an echo plexi type thing. Um, and what's cool with the flashback on the relay, if I'm on another patch, I can manually turn on the flashback if I want a little bit of delay, but that patch automatically brings it in. And then what's cool, I can add the zoom on top of the drive sound just by hitting the mode button and then adding the effects in. So uh, this is like an Octavia on top of the uh, drive sound. <laughs> And then 
I can layer any of the sounds I get out of the MS50G on top. And the only other thing is the wire's obviously out of the loop, so that can be added onto any of the sounds, including the drive sound. So this lead sound with wire. <laughs> And again that deeper sweep really comes into its own with the drive so that about sums up my grab and go rig thanks very much for tuning in and sticking around again like i said i'm sorry it's so hot in here i'll probably look an absolute mess by now um <laughs> If you dig this video or any of the other stuff, please look at subscribing to the channel, pressing the little bell and stuff. Really helps me out creating future vids. Um, and uh, I hope to see you in another video. Enjoy whatever you're doing with the rest of your day. Cheers, guys. Thank you.